Okay, we're back on the couch. A little better backlighting. Got a lamp going out of my head. Um, I'm going to take a quick 10 minutes and talk about drainage. Um, we've already learned that the thing to remember when you're designing anything, roads particularly, is you're designing a river, a dam, and a lake. Hopefully not at the sag curves. You go about designing your road to be its safest. When you're doing that, there'll be some constraints in terms of what you're going to be um, the lowest you can go because the potential of pipes or downstream constraints. If you've got a, if you're sending water down into some free water surface like a lake or a river that's coming up and down with tides or with uh, flow, you're going to have some downstream constraint that's going to push back up your system. So you'll eventually need to look at that. But what you're going to want to do is remember, always design any basin considering what will happen if your minor drainage system fails. So let's define these terms, the major drainage system and the minor drainage system. The minor drainage system are generally your stormwater pipes uh, and or your ditches per se that are designed to carry a percentage of flow or to keep water off the streets in those kind of recurring minor storms, the ones that occur every five or ten years. Uh, in Wisconsin, we uh, this is all in flux, but generally if you look at uh, the history of rainfall, uh, a six inches and 24 hour period storm has about a 1% chance of occurring. That's called a 100. Uh, the uh, return interval of the storm, so 100 years, 1 over 100 gets you a 1% chance. Um, it actually is the reverse. A, 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 a storm that has a 2% chance of occurring in a given year is a 50 year storm. A storm that has a 4% chance of occurring in a, in, in a year is a 25-year storm. And so because the way this topography of the state works out, we in this area and many parts of the state, even down in Milwaukee and Chicago, it's unusual these numbers are the same, but a 100-year a, a storm is about 6 inches, a 25-year storm is 4.8 inches, a 10-year storm is 4.2, and it goes down from there. Um, I think a 2.8 is a um, five-year storm, and you'll see these numbers can change, but once you get them in a piece of software, uh, use them a few times, you will know um, and, and tend to remember them for a particular area. These are determined by geography, the history of the rainfall in the area. This is the, these numbers are the 24-hour storms. Now, to give you an example, in that storm, you have a very intense period of rainfall, typically, historically. And so for the 24-hour storm, which has a rainfall of 6 inches in a 24-hour period, the maximum intensity of that storm um, was probably between 9 and 10 inches per hour. And so you can see, you can, you can devolve or revolve these curves, but um, these other set of curves that you look at are called the intensity duration frequency curves. And they are curves that kind of show if you're going to grab the five, for instance, the five most intense um, minutes of rainfall, uh, what would that intensity be? And this is done by, historically, by, by rain gauges and tipping gauges. Nowadays, with the advent of um, Doppler radar, you know, the amount of information, once again, you're getting from rainfall and storms is, is just incredible. So uh, one of the good things about the changing climate is, of course, we, we're, um, I don't know if I'm going to call it a good thing, we're, we're tracking and monitoring it more and more and more. Um, and, you know, keeps the TV weather people in business. All right, so that said, once one determines what each of your, you know, that you're going to always think about how the rainfall or how the, your, your design is going to perform even with a minor drainage system failing, right? You're going to look at how the water is going to always um, avoid the pipes and run down the street usually and then eventually into some tipping points out into some major, major drainage system like a, um, a ditch or something like that. All right. How do you go about then designing your minor, minor drainage system? 
You do that by identifying what would be called catchments or drainage basins or whatever you want to call them, to identifying areas that flow to each of your inlets or catch basins. In other words, places that are going to collect the minor drainage. Um, usually what will occur is if things don't make it into the minor drainage system, they're going to flow down through the major drainage system and you'll get something called bypass. But you mark up on your plans um, all of the places where water is going to be collected into the minor system and you identify them with numbers or letters. Um, that's going to be the identification for every typical catch basin or set of inlets is going to tie to the identification of the basin. From there, you have identified, using whatever tools you are capable of using, identifying the drainage areas. That's going to give you an acreage per drainage basin, or sub-catchment, as, as, the, as the case would be. You then identify the path of the longest raindrop within that basin, and you mark it up or do whatever you need to do so you know, in fact, what is going to be the path for the time of concentration. So you have the area defined. You determine its level of imperviousness. In other words, how much is asphalt, how much is grass, how much is roof, and you do a weighted average of the level of imperviousness. So that's given you your area in acres and your a weighted average of the impervious level. The final thing you must determine is your time of concentration. And the time of concentration is determined thus. It is the time it takes for the theoretical raindrop that falls at the farthest spot in the basin by time, not necessarily by distance, but the time it takes for the theoretical raindrop to fall, hit the ground, and then run to your, your inlet or catch basin, or we call the point of interest. Those three terms, the imperviousness, the area and the time of concentration will give you uh, inputs that you need to determine something called the, the hydrograph. All right, so in the end, what you are doing, you are taking and translating, if you would, a rainfall intensity map that occurs over a large area, which will be in inches per hour, graph versus time, time being hours, and translating it or computing what would be a hydrograph which is a graph of flow versus time and what you will see the farther and farther you go down the basin as basins flow to basins flow to basins um, all the way down to New Orleans the peak of the intensive rainfall will mitigate so you'll have this wave that instead of being really up and down over time that wave is going to have a, a, a smaller amplitude but it's going to be a longer wider wave. The theory of combining hydrographs or com combining rainfall curves is that the area under these hydrographs is going to be um, constant. Uh, now there'll be some loss